Hi, my name is Randall Loy, and you found me on the Infertility Channel. Thanks so much for joining us. I wanted to also thank you for all those questions that have been submitted over the last number of weeks. I'd like to start with one in particular. Lisa from New Haven, Connecticut wrote, Dear Dr. Loy, I'm 47 years of age, and I've had three laparoscopies for endometriosis. Are there any new medications on the horizon that might help me with my pelvic pain so that I don't have to undergo another surgery? That is a great question, and the answer is yes. It is the subject of today's talk. I'm going to be talking today about letrozole and endometriosis treatment. You will recall that a few episodes ago, we did talk about endometriosis, two episodes on endometriosis. We've also talked about laparoscopy. Laparoscopy is that minimally invasive belly button surgery where we can go in and not only diagnose endometriosis, but treat it. So today I'd like to tell you about a new medication. It's called letrozole. It's been in clinical usage for about 13 or 14 years, but not for the indication of endometriosis. Endometriosis, as you'll recall, is where these uterine lining glands have refluxed out through the tubes and are now growing inside of the pelvis as little inflammatory-like lesions. It is an estrogen-dependent process, so the goal for treatment has been to somehow decrease estrogen. Aromatase inhibitors, letrozole is the generic and Femara is the trade name, are excellent in turning off the estrogen. Now I'd like to refer to this diagram here. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what is a scrotum doing in the middle of the page? This is actually a pituitary. And I think God had only so many patterns to deal with, and so he replicated this a little bit lower. Anyway, the front part of the pituitary elaborates a couple of hormones that we're especially interested in in reproductive medicine. We've talked about these before, follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. Now these act on both the testes as well as the ovaries. Here, these hormones lead to androgens, or so-called male hormones, testosterone, and another one called androstenedione. So those hormones are made by cells outside of the follicle. Remember the follicle is an estrogen making and an egg containing cyst. So testosterone and androstenedione are made out side in the so-called fecal cells. Now, believe it or not, these androgens actually have to cross over the surrounding cells. They're called granulosa cells. The granulosa cells convert testosterone to the most potent estrogen called estradiol, and they convert androstenedione to an estrogen that is about one-tenth as strong as estradiol is called estrone. But what you need to know is that letrozole actually interferes with the aromatase enzyme. Aromatase is the enzyme that catalyzes the conversion of androgens, male hormones, into estrogens. We're going to turn this off right here. So what we have is a little bit more in the way of androgens in the ovary, and we have very little in the way of estradiol and estrone being made. That cuts off the fuel to the fire here. So we decrease the inflammation associated with the disease process. Endometriosis is a curious disease process and those endometriosis lesions, those little tiny uterine glands outside of the uterus, can actually synthesize their own estrogen. They can go all the way from cholesterol to estrogen. So it becomes a self-promoting vicious cycle. Now, aromatase inhibitors are able to shut down the estrogen being made in those little glands in, inside of the pelvis. Women who are postmenopausal, they have no more eggs, actually need only letrozole to help with their endometriosis-related pain. Women who are still of reproductive age, however, need letrozole plus another drug to turn off their endometriosis pain. Some of those drugs are things like birth control pills or another medicine we've talked about, Lupron, or progestins, those progesterone-like drugs. Those drugs have to be carefully monitored because letrozole plus Lupron can lead to thinning of the bones or osteoporosis. So the best combination probably is letrozole plus a birth control pill. Letrozole can be used with progesterone-like medications, birth control pills, or Lupron, luprolide acetate. All of those decrease the FSH associated with letrozole. So in the premenopausal woman, 
Probably, birth control pill usage is the best because it does not lead to thinning of the bones. Preliminary studies then suggest that letrozole may be an alternative to these other more classic medications in the long-term treatment of endometriosis-related pelvic pain. I have a story about how smelling good might be related or probably not related to pelvic pain. A couple of years ago, I had a patient come in who had had laparoscopy several years prior, and she stated since starting a new spray-on deodorant, she began having the same kind of pain. And so I asked her about what provoked the pain, what took it away, any medication she was taking, the severity, the timing, et cetera, et cetera, thorough history, full physical examination, blood test. I couldn't come up with anything. I was scratching my head, wondering what had caused this pain. And so for the want of any good advice, I said, why don't you switch to a roll-on? And she says, do you think it will help? I said, I don't know. Three days later, she called me. She goes, doctor, you're brilliant. The roll-on helped. Now, there's no association between smelling good or deodorants and, and pain relief. There's none. But in that particular patient, the placebo effect worked. So next week, it's time to talk turkey and turkey basters. We're going to be talking about obesity and reproduction, and it'll be a time for feasting and a time after my story of fasting. Be sure to share this video with your friends and subscribe to catch all new episodes each week here on the Infertility Channel. Plus, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. I love hearing from you. Comment below or tell me what you want to see on future episodes by sending me an email to comments at infertilitychannel.org. Until next week.